Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to another Dawnless Days update. This is version 0.7, and we are momentarily about to witness an absolutely glorious battle of Helm's Deep on the brand new map that is absolutely breathtaking. We have 18,000 soldiers fighting dying and even a massive explosion in the middle of the deeping wall however before we do dive into that the developers of the mod did want me to go ahead and mention this recent discord post basically going ahead and talking about what they've been doing the past year heavily focusing in on the new campaign map with of course the custom map of middle earth which has been created with the specific tools that they've created from the ground up which is absolutely insane because previously total war attila was impossible to edit the campaign pay map however the tools that they've developed from the ground have uh, gone ahead and made that a possibility which is so exciting that that dream that realization of having a custom dawnless days campaign map with all the amazing assets and extra stuff that they are adding in is, is, you know is finally going to be realized in the future and they go ahead and talk about that they talk about how the campaign map for their first initial release is currently around about 50 percent done so not only is that the campaign map itself but it's also the like assets for the tech trees the the models for units unit cards uh, the faction setup the the scripts and all that stuff so tons of work and they're currently about halfway through that initial release however they are planning on not going ahead and filling out the entirety of that custom campaign map they are going to leave some reason regions desolate in the first release but you can probably imagine that the majority of the main factions will be in there and will have all their unique stuff kind of interesting scripts and stuff like that custom maps which leads me on to my next point because they are putting so much of their effort into this campaign map and they are a relatively small team they are in desperate need of 2d and 3d artists to go ahead and not only help this process of creating the campaign map but also help with stuff like we're looking at right now being able to go in and redevelop these awesome maps which will then obviously populate the map of helms deep to go ahead and re-update some of the older factions because this mod has been around for a long long time seven eight years now probably so again some of the assets for the older factions are a little bit out outdated now and need a little bit of razzmatazz and of course i will leave a link to the discord down below in the description where you can go ahead and check out their recruitment page and hopefully help out the mod so be sure to do that and let's just dive into this epic 18,000 man battle of helms deep have that out of the way let's dive into the action and take a look at this battle so this is a 17,000 soldier battle it's going to be absolutely insane and i think that the developers have done such a good job with the design of the actual subtle one itself helms deep looks glorious and one of the things i really like about it is not only does it look amazing it fits just like in the movies but there's also these large scale streets which battles can be held as the defenders slowly fall back so we've gone ahead and really thought about how battles work in total war attila as well as actually kind of just making it feel as if you are fighting in the battle of helm's deep which is really exciting for the battle itself as you can see we have 18,000 soldiers actually 19,000 soldiers on the battlefield there are two armies from dunland there are two armies from isengard and then defending we also have a army of galadrian elves uh, from lothlorien and then we also have two forces from rohan there's gonna be a mix of quality on both sides but it's going to be a really really exciting uh, battle for sure and i'm actually very very happy that they decided to go and bring in the dunland forces as well because they go ahead and add in some really really nice uh, i guess fodder to the isengard army buffs up their their forces and allows them to kind of make that initial breach into the enemy position and i think we're going to be getting our first volley of the battle right now with the uh yeah the men of rohan unleashing that first volley down onto the enemy force forces and uh, able to take up a handful of them as they do the Urukai, obviously aiming in between their necks of the armor is weak you can also see as well we do also have some new siege equipment this came in the previous update i believe but we do actually have again proper isengard siege equipment which is going to be perfect and as we mentioned in the intro as well this is going to be awesome for when we do inevitably get the campaign which is over 50 percent complete now that is very very exciting in defenders are going to be quite stretched i think on this assault so as you can see they've gone ahead and stuck the walls themselves with a lot of archers the Galadrian elves are going to be able to 
fire at a much faster rate, use their ammunition up much faster than anyone else, and yeah, get a lot more kills than anyone else. You can just see the how deadly the volleys are on these half-orc axes, able just to go ahead and leave numbers on the ground. I mean, that is a brutal. The Urukai with shields are going to be able to fare that a little bit better because they have that protection, but even they're going to be struggling. Up at the gatehouse as well, we are slowly pushing up the battering ram, and unfortunately, there is no side passage on this map for Aragorn and Gimli to jump across. However, still going to be awesome nonetheless, especially this position. I think this looks so cool. And you got soldiers shooting over the ramparts, on the ramparts. It looks really cool. And they're going to be volleying in. I'm sure they're going to be probably trying to look to get some side shots in from that wall. And just look at the scale of Helm's Deep. It looks absolutely incredible. They've done such a good job with kind of really Im showing this imposing fortress, uh, you know, that is for all intents and purposes pretty impenetrable. Uh, and we're going to have to see if they're going to have enough to take them out. Obviously, throwing forward their weaker legions at the beginning of this battle. Nothing. You're kind of keeping a lot more of their elite soldiers back. The berserkers are itching to get stuck in. But they're going to wait up. And do they actually have any explosive units? Yes, they do. Okay, we actually have have the, uh, the explosive bomb dudes as well. So they're going to be running through into this breach where the wall is a weak. And as you can see, the defenses have done a pretty good job so far. However, the walls, ladders, ladders, the walls are now about to be breached. The men of Dundon are going to be going up there. How's the ammunition looking? And it's a little bit shaky because there's still plenty of ammunition left across this position. They've been able to get a decent amount of kills so far, racking up uh, what we got over a thousand kills so far on this initial assault. But these are Arches are about to get pinned down, and then, of course, their, their bow skills are going to be fairly, fairly useless, and that's going to allow them to get more reinforcements up from all back there. If they can go up unopposed, on being shot at, that is going to be amazing, especially over on this side as well. We've actually got some decent Urukai infantry now making their way up the ladders themselves. You can see climbing up two by two. Really awesome stuff right there. The ladders are great. And now the defenders are going to have to whip out their swords. The men of Rohan now taking advantage of this to go ahead and uh, reinforce. Whereas a lot of the Lothlorien infantry are now falling back, getting the hell out of there. Again, really nice design here with the walls, making them thick so that it works inside a Total War Attila. You can always run into these big issues, but still pretty nasty. And there you go. The men of Dundon now reinforcing and jumping over adding into that first initial assault. But as you can see, there are so many soldiers, thousands, tens of thousands, making their way up. And the men of Rohan are going to be hard-pressed to hold this one for sure. However, they do have plenty of reserves, some decent Rohirrim back here, armored soldiers. We've got elves back there and everything else. But I think it's only a matter of time until that breach goes down and the soldiers come flying through. The gate is also finally starting to be assaulted. Uh, and you can see it does just go down right there. I'm not sure how long that gate took to actually go down. Hopefully it's a bit longer than in vanilla because, you know, this is a pretty fortified gate. However, the men of Rohan are eager to withstand anything that comes their way. And I can only imagine, yeah, the archer up here are firing down on the assaulting soldiers looking to rack up as many kills as possible especially over here as well you can see a lot of reinforcements firing in and they also have these supply barrels right here which are a unique feature inside of the game uh, and they basically resupply units with more ammunition which is again a really nice feature allowing the defenders to have that little bit more of an advantage and you can see they're doing a good job here killing off a lot of Urukai, which are making it off but the fighting on the walls is still pretty fierce you can see there plenty of soldiers especially off in the distance wow yeah, there's a lot of soldiers off in the distance there, making their way forward, assaulting surrounding units, and yeah, cutting them down. But the Lothlorien elves are throwing themselves into the fight as best as they can, and hopefully will be successful re repelling the assaults as best as they can. Again, this assault along the wall is going to eventually mean that something has to crumble. Hopefully we can still get more volleys coming in from the Hornburg and the defenses up there. If we just go down the wall itself, man, this is awesome. A real sheer scale of the assault right now is unfolding. And if they can just break through one of these positions, they can then utilize these ramps to get down and then start assaulting the other positions. I'm also going to be very much keeping my eye 
on the uh, the explosive units as well. Here they come. Okay, is this going to be it? Please work. Sometimes they can be a bit buggy, but I'm putting my full faith. Legolas, bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. Please work. Please send the wolf flying. I want to see this. It's going to be glorious. I believe, I believe they're going to do it. I think they're getting ready to set themselves ablaze with the arrow fire coming in. All hope does look lost. I'm going to keep my eye on this position. Because it is going to blow, I think. The bombers are at the wall. I think they just need another command. Here they come. Are they doing it? Yeah, they're going to do it. And boom! There we go. The wall of Helm's Deep has been breached. And that looks amazing. Soldiers getting sent flying. The men of Rohan somehow surviving that. And yeah, there is now a breach in the Hornburg. That is going to be really, really bad news. And you can see the men of Dunland, the Uruks of Isengard, are now rushing towards this position. There is no hope left. And look at that. Where is Aragorn? Where is Gimli? When you need them, the elves are dying in their hundreds. They've set up a defense preparing for this assault. But now the enemy missile fire is coming in and all hope looks lost. The walls themselves as well are not looking too great either. A lot of the Dunland soldiers, which are now getting fully stuck in here, are able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the men of Rohan. And one of the really exciting things as well as the breach fully gets underway is that Dunland are getting pretty much a full rework in the, the mod, uh, especially along with the campaign as well. There's going to be a lot of features with Dunland in the campaign where you can kind of choose to side with either Isengard or Rohan, and that's going to dictate some of the units that you actually get access to. But yeah, Dunland are going to get a complete rework from what I've seen on the forums, which again is really, really exciting. Definitely one of the more vanilla esque looking factions. Granted, they are one of the more vanilla style factions. You know, they're much more Attila than any other faction in the Lord of the Rings. But even still, it'll be cool to kind of get another kind of take on them, another look on them. And the preview art that they've been showing have is looking really good. How is the gate going? Seems like the gate is very much a slow burner right now. They've set up a pretty defensive formation here with pikes and white hand stormers, some of the best defense of soldiers uh, that you can bring to bear. Uh, but looking not to push this quite yet. I think they want to make try and make more progress down there. Oh, and look at that. The progress they are making. I love this uh, lighting effect as well from the explosion. And I also think as well, this is all custom made as well. This breach is completely custom made as well, which is super cool. Really, really cool. I wonder as well, yeah, all the other pop walls of the Hornburg are indestructible so you can only destroy that one part of that oh no you can also destroy this part as well no indestructible uh no you can destroy it yeah all, all the wall is indestructible right there so you can only breach this one point and i love all this custom animation as well it looks really cool they've done an amazing job there massive props to the uh the designers who came up with as we can see though plenty of rooks are now charging into the breach once more we have the pikes pushing forward we have the uh pretty aggressive blood avengers from dunland as well then big old uh weapons as slabs of metal and the urukai armor that i guess has been land leased to them by isengard uh, in a pretty brutal fashion and yeah, I think the numbers are just proving a little bit too much more. Elves are now flocking to this position, leaving that far left-hand side. We also do have a nice little position up on this left-hand side. And this is really looking down onto the position of the assault. I think they're a little bit out of range, but again, it looks so cool looking at it from the distance all the way up here. Um, and again, this is a, actually a capture point as well, so it gives a reason for the attackers to come up here. It doesn't link, link back up to the fortress itself, uh, but you obviously can make your way through here, which I think does teleport you to the other side. Yeah, it does teleport you through here, so you can actually retreat through this position, but you can't come through the other way, which I think is pretty reasonable. Speaking of which, the assault is now kicking off here. It looks like they've sent in the Berserkers to try and clear a path for the White Hand Stormers. And these berserkers will just eat the Rohan militia alive. They're not going to stand a chance whatsoever. It's going to be a brutal. A lot of the uh, the archers up here are now firing down as well, utilizing them supply barrels. I think some of these guys are actually also um, firing in on the stormers. You're not going to make much progress down there on them guys, I don't think. 
better off to try and kill the berserkers and deal with them but yeah the main assault over here is looking a bloody the gladion elves still able to kind of hold their own but more elite reinforcements are arriving and i will also mention as well there is no there is unfortunately no amir turning up with what the three four thousand men of rohan uh, to come and save the day so this is just a bitter fight to the last man at the hornberg no no help will come this day and you can see here this is brutal fighting the fact that they've been able to bring in their own archers now on the attacking side and just firing volley after volley has really thinned out the men of rohan uh, and yeah as we can see uh yeah it's not looking good whatsoever 6,000 uh, men left on the attacking. 4,000 on the defenders. They actually do have a surprisingly large amount of men left remaining. That number is dropping very, very quickly. And I think we'll be seeing even more of them soldiers going down now. But there is, you know, plenty of positions for them to break in here. Assault these positions. Kind of get around the flanks. Clear out the walls. And yeah, look at that. All these crossbows are now coming into the settlement. And this is going to be perfect. There's actually no ammunition left on the archers up there. And if they can get the crossbows up here, they'll be able to fire down on all these defensive positions as more of the Urukai go in and just start cutting down the remnants of the Galadrian Elves who are trying their hardest to hold the line. Uh, but yeah, the Lothlorians are not going to be here for much longer, I don't think. And that position uh, it is going to be lost for sure. We do have some good units here. Gu uh, guards of the Golden Hall, a very, very strong spear unit. Really just needs to kind of get their face stuck in avoid being shot from up there by the crossbows when they inevitably do get up here uh, you can see crossbows immediately getting over here and they can just start basically surveying this entire part of the deeping wall and just kill a lot of the enemy forces and yeah they're breaking through now Dunland able to get in here and this is really the last position. How much ammunition do these elves have left? I mean, they spent pretty much all their ammunition. Haldir himself has not gone down quite yet, even though he is covered in blood. And I think that is going to be his doom very, very soon. Getting off the last couple shots from their bows before they're having to without their swords. 200 kills, though, is still pretty impressive. They've definitely got their money's worth. And now the archers are firing from all the way up here, looking to support as best as they can. Yeah, I mean, if I was... If I was Haldir, maybe rushing up here and just trying to retreat and hold this line for as much, uh, as much as possible. This is also pretty cool as well. We also have a supply barrel here, so the elves can actually reinforce their arrows as well as they you know, continually fall back, which is always super, super cool. Yeah, this, this deeping wall is for sure lost. And I think the main assault on the on the actual gate itself will also be running in because ammunition is dropping. Berserkers have been broken, but I mean, at what cost? How many kills? Did they, they rack up there? If I can find the Berserkers. Oh, yeah, look at that. They're not even dead. They're just falling back right there. 150 kills and 150 kills, basically. That's really good. Granted, they are now taking volleys from uh, from the Yeomans of the Mark. You can fire him pretty nicely down there. Every volley will be killing a handful of very expensive units. So being able to shoot down here is always very good. Yeah, another volley going in there, doing some deadly, deadly damage. Here we go. Another one going to be coming in momentarily, I think. It'd be interesting to see actually how many kills they get on that volley. Yeah, they kill like four or five and that's on one of the units. I'm sure it's the same on the other one. Oh, wow. There is barely any red left now. Yeah, whatsoever. This entire position has been overrun and I think they have plenty of reinforcements left to then start pushing in. However, defenders are now setting up. They are throwing soldiers in here, obviously looking to defend the inner keep as best as they can. And as long as they keep hold of the walls and they keep hold of the gate, this is going to be a hard position for Isengard to crack, right? They're going to be getting enveloped from this entire side. Uh, the defenders could even try and stick some archers. If I can do this, will it let me? Yeah, they can even stick some defenders up here as well with some arrow fire shooting into the back of them. There's definitely plenty of ways. Oh, it went there. Yeah, you could definitely stick some archers here and just shoot into the back. Oh, there's also an entire unit of Urukai crossbowmen here. That's a real big misplay. They're going to be getting cut to pieces now, unfortunately. That is a very valuable unit. Going to be getting cut down. I imagine they'll probably be trying to get them the hell out of there momentarily. But for now, that's going to be pretty scary. Uh, and yeah, is Haldir dead? No, Haldir managed to retreat, thank God. Yeah, how? No, did he? I think he did. Did he? Is that Gladion Bowman? No, it's Garrison's. So Haldir is dead. I didn't even hear it get announced. Wow, that's unfortunate. Poor Haldir. 
Or at least he's fleeing for his life somewhere. I didn't even notice as well that Phaedon is dismounted and he's actually up here overseeing the battlefield. Uh, his horses are down there. He has a perfect opportunity to obviously remount and then of course get stuck back in. Do one final charge out which hopefully we do see at the end of the battle because this is looking more and more uh, unlikely that the defenders are going to hold here. They just simply are running out of men whereas the defenders still have uh, what yeah 200 a uh, 2000 man disadvantage which of course is going to hurt them in a pretty large scale especially once the uh, once the outer defenses are completely taken you can see they are now throwing in again more of the Dunland soldiers these are warlord blood swarms so they're, they're pretty decent infantry they are also fighting some of the more elite soldiers of rohan and of course the remnants of the gladrian elves but it's going to be a, a slog up here and then eventually a slog that they are going to be losing and these men of Rohan can just simply see the sheer amount of soldiers pouring into their once great fortress. Okay, no, I completely lied. I completely made this up. Apparently, you can go through here. Okay, cool. No, that's awesome to see. So, I guess it's tied to... Uh, yeah, where is it tied to? Oh, here, I guess. Yeah, here. Okay, I didn't see it. I thought it was tied to this position. But, yeah, you can actually go ahead and, and go through the mountain pass right there to actually get over to this to reinforce it. I like that. That means that the attackers can utilize this if they can break it to go and get onto the, the inner walls and really start causing some issues. And that's going to be another position that the defenders have to try and hold. The only real downside is now that the defenders have barely they have no they they literally have one unit of ammunition left these arrows are not going to be doing enough damage right now so this is really all in the attackers court and they just basically have to set up their attacking and get ready they're, they're throwing more and more men into this position unfortunately they're going to be coming in piecemeal so this does give the defenders a good opportunity to kind of set up these counter charges they can set up some extra ambushes and other stuff like that but it's going to pretty much just come down to whether or not they can withstand the pressure. You can see, here we go. The rest of the ammunition being used wisely on these soldiers to be shot into the back of the Dunlin Chosen. Because they are very scary. They can really cut through a lot of soldiers. There's already 200 kills on this 50-man unit. So you want to bring them down as quickly as possible. And these arrows in the back are definitely going to be the way to do it. I really feel like as well that the gate isn't being like assaulted enough. I feel like they should be trying to push more men through this gate. Because... You can put some really quality infantry in here. Now there's not really much to be too scared about. Um, and again, there's not really too much men of Rohan like really here. Granted, they can bring in more soldiers to try and stop this. But it's again, a lot of weaker archers. They do also have some infantry up here as well. I guess some sword things that we could, they could bring down. But yeah, I feel like maybe committing... Oh, here we go. There's some archers coming over. But committing like your generals and maybe some other elite soldiers here. Be a really good idea. The defenders are putting up a really, really good defense though. They've gone ahead and really stabilized the position considering what how chaotic as soon as that wall went down over in the deeping wall. Like just sheerly how many soldiers came flying in. And it was, yeah, an absolute mess. But they kind of stabilized. Got some good archer positioned up here ready to defend this when the pikes finally make it through. We also have soldiers at the gate house in this pretty good formation so they can kind of attack these more aggressive soldiers. The attackers are now finally bringing over. Two more units of very aggressive aggressive infantry and now these Dunhur chosen are going to be yeah very very uh, bloodied I think there's nothing to really oppose them whatsoever and they are just trying to brute force their way through this position and they are slowly winning this numbers battle like they have that on their side they have that advantage they have the manpower and they're just throwing everything they have against the Rohan and they're just going to end up running out of soldiers as of right now, you know, they, they're still that 2,000 man advantage, which is, again, pretty sturdy throughout the entire battle. And a lot of the archers are still here. You've got to think of this as well. These yeomans of a mark aren't great in melee combat. They have no ammunition left. However, they're taking up 152 of them, the men left, you know. Oh, wow, that's really interesting design as well. Again, we're like learning things as we play. Look at that. So it seems like once this position has been lost, the attackers can actually go ahead and get soldiers up on the wall, which explains why there were swordsmen up here in the first place, which is actually really interesting. I like that. It kind of encourages the defenders to hold that breach and not let the attackers get further in because, as you can see, if they can break through here, then all of a sudden the entire position is lost right like if they can clear this wall out they can then get down here and start attacking in the side there they can go ahead and utilize this and break their way into the inner layer as well and start really putting pressure on this is actually a really nice play and yeah this is whether or not the defenders can hold the archers are now firing it in a very deadly way and it seems like there's a little bit of a bug here with the pathfinding which i imagine is kind of frustrating 
But these archers would be shooting nonetheless into the side of them. Uh, so far, though, they've only lost, what, six soldiers? So doing okay. They really should be trying to get these crossbows into play somehow. I don't really know how. I, I guess they're going to be sending the crossbows all the way back around and up and try and get them on this wall. Might be a little bit too late as more men of Rohan are now breaking. More soldiers are up here. Yeah, these White Hand Stormers, this should, this should be Isengard General right now. He's fully committed himself to this battle. And yeah, it's just slicing and dicing these swordsmen. This also does give the advantage as well. The attackers can also utilize this as well. Sorry, the defenders could also utilize this by like trying to ambush them at the gate. But I really like that. I really like that castle design. It is, it's very, very good to see. Because a lot of the time, you want to give the attackers an advantage in a sense. But make it so it's not just a grind through one choke point. A lot of siege maps in Total War in general devolve down to like just pushing a single choke point and having these like extra extra places which kind of give advantages if you can push enough and then it expands out to other positions. I think that's really, really nice map design. And I'm personally a big, big fan of it. How are they looking over on this side? Yeah, that green line is looking very thin. If the attackers want to seize the opportunity, they could quite easily push down here. Uh, there's nothing stopping them whatsoever. This ba Baden is still watching. I don't know. It looks like he's, he's trying to get down from, from the stairs at least. Hopefully he can find his way down. Yeah, there you go. Feardin's unit is now rallying. Is he going to get on his horses and try and stop? Yeah, and this is bad. This is bad for Dunher. Chosen are through the gate and diving into the garrison of the Hornburg. However, these armored men of Rohan are going to be no match for his shock infantry. They are bred for a single purpose. And that is to storm this castle once and for all. Yeah, there we have it. The gates have been completely overrun now. This position has been completely overrun. And everything that remains is now going to make their way in. I imagine we'll be seeing a lot of archers mount these walls and start firing arcing shots. Theoden has mounted his horsemen, so he is ready. He is ready to launch out the final assault if he needs. Nice little counter assault here with the Isengard forces getting a little bit too cocky mounting up, but the defenders are going to be charging out. Again, trying to deal with these crossbowmen as quickly as possible. Every crossbowman they, they can kill is going to be huge, and the attackers are maybe just a little bit too overzealous here. And yeah, nice little, you know, play there by the men of Rohan. Dive out here, try and kill the crossbowmen whilst they still can. Uh, again, we're getting a lot more soldiers being poured in. The crossbowmen are getting set up here to probably fire in. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see a counter charge. They're, they, they're utilizing their men now. Granted, the battle is pretty much in their favor with their 2 to 1 man advantage now. If they don't want to go ahead and take anything for granted, they are still struggling. Over on the left-hand side, the defenders holding firm once again. But I also think these yeomans of the mark, even if they have 150 kills, they're running low in ammunition. And again, it's only a matter of time until some soldiers uh, get sent around. Oh, they have to go all the way around here, though. Yeah, there's no way that's happening anytime soon because of this. A nice move there. This entire unit of crossbowmen just wiped out. Really good play there by the uh, defenders. Oh, wow, as well. We also have some bombers as well as some sappers still left alive. Are they going to charge in here and just blow up all these soldiers? I mean, it's a pretty smart move if they do. And there is no archers to stop them. These guys have free reign. It's just whether or not that they can explode uh, before they get killed in melee. So I think they have to touch the enemy. I mean, I'm interested to see because they'll kill all of this. And again, they might not have noticed. Are they going to be able to get off these bombs or not? Oh, they do! They do! Nice! That was not as big of an explosion as I was maybe expecting, but I guess it's all down to balancing and not wanting to make it ridiculous in a siege. But still, that, that definitely killed a lot. Uh, we'll see, I think, at the end of the battle replay exactly how many kills they got. The defenders, the Yeomans of a Mark, have retreated from this position right now to help out and try and provide any support that they can. This position is now completely overrun, and I think this is the final hours for Rohan. Feodin, however, is not going to go down without a fight. He's looking to form up on the left-hand side and charge in. Ride out with me. Unfortunately, not as, as effective as in the movies where he does just thread through these, these lines. Uh, he is now immediately stopped by the heavier infantry of Isengard and is going to have some pretty hard uh, hard fights ahead of himself. Going to be pulling out and again, I guess, charging back in, just trying to hammer an anvil. But his left-hand side is also under a lot of pressure as well. Plenty of soldiers moving in, trying to get as many kills as possible. The crossbowmen are also set up 
I guess they're going to be trying to... If, I mean, if they can, they can get up on this wall. It's going to be huge. They're in so far. He's been doing a pretty good job. He's up to 63 kills now by basically just like hammer and anviling the ever-living heck out of each side. Uh, going in, getting some trample kills, pulling out, trying to lose more men. Raren have also done a great job as well, not giving up this position. They, they fought hard with his left-hand side because it does it does lead into the inner keep. So you do not want to give up that position. They've done a great job to hold it. However, their days are, are well and truly numbered, I think. This unit of spearmen are almost done. I mean, it's this yeoman of the mark, which really are not going to do too much. And there's still a handful of, you know, we've even got one of the Isengard generals back there uh, waiting. Some infantry as well as some soldiers back there as well. And I think we're going to be seeing a mass route very, very soon. Feodin is still holding, though. That's the thing. Feodin is still making his last stand, but I think the entire army is going to route before then, unfortunately. Which is a shame, because it would be really cool to kind of have that unbreakable last stand of the top. Yeah, Feodin is broken, which is a little bit sad to see in the Battle of Helm's Deep. There is no retreating in this battle. Um, but yeah, he has ended up breaking. I don't know how they managed to break him, to be honest. Considering, you know, he is a general and stuff. But, yeah, he goes down. The, the flag is lost. And then, yeah, a mass route will ensue. And uh, the battle is over. I guess Baden maybe took an arrow to the chest. And then everybody just fled for their lives. And a victory for the forces of evil. No AMA to turn up and save the day. Yeah, look at that. 300 kills on them sappers right towards the end. That is just absolutely insane a massive thank you to everybody who played in this battle and for the dev team for sending it my way i very much do appreciate that if you guys want to go ahead and check out more rise of mordor stay up to date with this new update that is releasing tomorrow or going ahead and just keeping an eye on the campaign which as i mentioned in the beginning of the video is now 50 percent done for phase one of their release which is hella exciting i cannot wait to dive in i'm actually not sure who i want to play first whether it's gondor or isengard or mordor let me know in the comments who you want to play first in the uh, in the campaign when it does inevitably come and i'll see you guys in the next one